Sarah here from smallbusinesssarah.com and today I have a short video for you showing you some of the tips and tricks and things that I've learned from working with Sync with Etsy over these past couple of months. First we're going to head to reports and then to the balance sheet. Mine is as of July 31st but you can change your dates if required. So as of July 1st of 2021, Etsy should have been collecting and remitting sales tax on every sale to every state made on the Etsy platform. There's been a transition period with states and what states require marketplaces such as Etsy to collect and remit sales tax. But as of July 1st, Etsy's collecting and remitting sales tax for everyone. But you'll notice we have a balance here in sales tax clearing. Now these kinks are slowly being worked out between the Etsy program and with the Sync with Etsy program. So eventually some of these hiccups are going to go away. But in the meantime, starting from the month of July on, we really shouldn't be seeing an amount in that sales tax clearing column. So we need to clear that. So what we're gonna do is we entered the sales tax clearing account and you see how it normally, well, it's the order can be off a little, but Etsy collects the sales tax and then they remit it, collects it, remit it, and it goes on and on. And so the balance periodically becomes zero as it should. But then we come along to instances where no longer is the balance going to zero. So you kind of have to hunt around to find the transaction that's the offender. In this case, you'll notice that $1.54 keeps popping up as a balance. And the $1.54 here collected does not have a alternate minus of being remitted. So we're gonna click on this, and that's gonna pull up the sales receipt that sync with Etsy brought in. This was a Florida sale and you may notice some transition period especially with Florida sales, Kansas sales, Puerto Rico and earlier in the year there were some European countries where this issue was cropping up as well. So you'll notice we have the sales tax collected but Etsy did not actually give this sales tax money to this Etsy seller. They actually remitted the money from this Florida sales tax themselves. So we're just going to add a line, start typing, and find sales tax remitted. And then we're going to manually add in the $1.54. And then we'll go ahead and save and close. Okay, so we've handled that transaction. Let's keep going. There's definitely another one lurking out there somewhere. Let's see if we can find it. So we come to zero. And then let's see, does the 459 I'm not seeing a remitted for that, so let's see if this is our other culprit. And once again, it's Florida. Like I said, there's a transition period where things aren't happening quite correctly on the Etsy or the Sync with Etsy end. So once again, we're gonna add sales tax remitted, negative 459, save and close. I should say as well that this seller is located in Washington State, so there is no way in which she should have been receiving any Florida sales tax. In addition, I should mention that for Florida sellers prior to July 1st, you should be obtaining a balance in that Etsy sales tax clearing account. So right now we're at zero, so that's where we want to be. We're going to go back to the report summary. And now our Etsy sales tax clearing account is zero as it should be. As I said, prior to July 1st, the only sellers that really should have been accumulating a balance in that Etsy sales tax clearing account were Florida and Kansas. There were a couple other states that had a transition period early in 2021 as well, so that could possibly apply to you. But for the most part, Florida and Kansas were like the last holdouts on the marketplace facilitator tax laws requiring marketplaces like Etsy to collect and remit their sales tax. So that's how you handle it. If you have a growing Etsy sales tax clearing balance and you should not have that balance. So let's move on to the next item. For this, we're gonna head to banking, specifically PayPal. 
so this issue only applies if you are a seller who sells not only on Etsy, but on other platforms that use PayPal. So for example, a lot of Shopify shop owners use PayPal as one of their possible payment processors for their Shopify shop. And that's what we have here. So our example is right here in products and services. We've already set our PayPal sales to go to Shopify bank, which if you follow my Shopify method, you'll know what that means. If you don't, you probably don't have to worry about this. So anyway, we have everything properly set to Shopify bank that's covered in that other video, but the discounts, any discounts given are incorrectly being picked up by the line from the sync with Etsy app. Etsy shop sales discounts. So that's going to your Etsy shop line in your profit and loss, the discount for Etsy shop, even though this is a Shopify sale. And there's not a setting that you can change for this. It just is what it is. And QuickBooks is aware of this issue. They're working towards a resolution. But in the meantime, we need to be careful because if we start categorizing, if we just keep going down the line and adding all of these deposits, like we normally would, thinking they're all going to Shopify bank as they should, we're going to be surprised at the end of the year that our Etsy shop sales discount account is inaccurate. So to fix this, there's a couple ways. We can change the type. We can change it to deposit and then set the account to Shopify bank, which is where we want it to go. If you are selling directly from PayPal, maybe the account that you want it to all go to is PayPal sales, for example. So you still don't want the discount that you might have offered from your direct PayPal sales to go to the Etsy discount account. You want that to be applied to the PayPal sales line. So this would still apply in that situation as well. So we're going to set that to Shopify bank, and then we're going to click add. And then the entire amount will go to Shopify bank like we want. It will not have that broken out piece go to the discount account. So if we have a large amount of sales, instead of doing this individually, we're just going to click update, deposit. You can pick a payee if you want, Shopify deposits, and then Shopify bank or PayPal sales or whatever in your situation, you don't want the discount separated out and go into Etsy discounts, apply and accept. And we are not going to apply a rule with PayPal. I rarely apply rules because they just tend to mess things up. So that's the workaround for that issue. Hopefully it'll eventually be resolved, but until then, at least we have a easy solution to that problem. Okay, the last tip I want to cover is in regard to time zones. An update has been made to include a setting of a time zone option when you sync the Etsy app. But for those of us who synced early on in the release, we did not have that option. So now it's nice if we can go back and add it. So if you go to apps and then my apps, you'll see your sync with Etsy. We're going to go to settings. And this is also how you would change like if your credit card where fees are charged or your bank account where deposits are made. If any of that changes, you will do that here. We are going to go to edit right here. We have our checking and our credit card all set. And then here is where you would change your time zone. So I am America, New York. So I'm going to stick with that. And you can find your time zone, make that change, and save. So once again, if you're setting up Sync with Etsy for the first time, that time zone is going to be an option that's available to you from the beginning, from the initial setup. But for those of us who linked this app to our QuickBooks account in February of 21, we need to go back and make this change. It was not available at that time. Hopefully these few tips and tricks that I've learned from working with Sync with Etsy will help you to clean up your books just a little bit and have everything be even more accurate. I am in general extremely happy with Sync with Etsy and how it works, but with anything new and these complicated integrations, there's just a couple little hiccups that are being worked out. And hopefully this will help you figure out how to solve those 
and keep the best books you can. Have a great day.